Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Stephen King podcast. This is episode number 47. Since this is the middle of the summer, we don't have much news for you today. The only real news thing is that uh, the audio version of Drunken Fireworks is out. It's out on audio and it's about one and a half hour long. I have listened to it and uh, I have my review up on Lilia's library if you want to check it out. We're going to talk about more of that once the Bazaar of Bad Dreams is released, since that will be included there. Mm -hmm. And you are saving it for then? Yes. Yes. This is great. What's our job? We'd like to drive around, pick up stiffs or what? It's time for reviews from The Night Shift. Today we are going to talk about the first three episodes of Under the Dome Season 3. So if you Mm -hmm. haven't seen those, (laughs) yeah, you might want to check them out first. We will have a lot to say about them. Yes. Um, and then we are continuing the Stephen King Revisited with Rage, the first mm-hmm. of the Bachman books. So, Hello. yeah, and with me is Lou. Hello, everyone. Hello. So we are just the two of us today. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I uh, just want to say to North American people, uh, because it's just been recent on this July weekend, happy Canada today to everybody in Canada on July 1st, and happy July 4th to everybody in the U.S. Uh, so both yep. those countries had their birthdays. Do you guys celebrate something similar in Sweden? Hans? Yeah, we have we have the National Day, but it, it has never been any celebrations uh, oh. here. It's not what, a big what thing. What day is that? Uh, <laughs> I know you were going to ask that. <laughs> you don't remember. know. Well, see, if you turn it into a holiday, you would remember. <laughs> Actually, a couple of years ago, they did turn it into a holiday oh. to make to make everybody uh, see it more and mm-hmm. to get a day off from work. Right. But it didn't, it didn't help. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you still get the day off? Yep. Okay. How, how old is Sweden as a country? Well, you're full of questions today. I Oops, can't answer. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm looking up here, and it's actually June 6th. Okay. That's Sweden's national day, and I'm trying to see if actually I don't I don't know how old uh, Sweden is. Hmm. We have we have been celebrating it since 1523. Wow, there you go. So I guess uh, Sweden is pretty long, almost, pretty old. <laughs> yeah, almost uh, 500 yeah. years. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And you look at the U.S. and Canada, like just both barely over 100. Yeah. Anyhow, sorry for that divergence, but I, I just yep. thought people might be curious to know about Sweden's celebrations. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's pretty pretty sh- shameful that we don't celebrate it more. Uh, mm. But it's 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 never been uh, a big holiday here in Sweden, and uh, as I mentioned, they want to make it a bigger holiday and give everybody the day off and so. But mm-hmm. it's they try, but it it hasn't really been that big here. So oh, that's too bad. Well, hopefully that will yeah. change in the future. Yeah. And speaking yep. of shameful. Shall we move yes. on to our re- review of Under the Dome? <laughs> yes. Uh, season 3 has just begun and takes off uh, pretty much where the second season ended, with everyone uh, leaving through the caves and there's a white light. All of a sudden, everybody is back under the dome, or rather outside the dome. Mm-hmm. And the dome is destroyed and everything is over. People go back and live their normal lives, all except, is it Big Jim and Junior. Julia? Julia uh, and Junior. Junior. Yeah. yeah. And the dog. And the dog. Exactly. Wherever that because dog they... came from, have no idea. Yep, yep. But of course, this isn't the case. <laughs> and here it gets, it gets really w- weird. What really happens is that... <sighs> I forget her name. What Melanie. Melanie has captured everyone in cocoon-like stuff in the caves where mm-hmm. they are held in those cocoons and are dreaming of their other life uh, that we see. And the only one survivors managed to or Melanie is, is trying to get the egg and she plays it over one of the cocoons and just as something is going to happen Big Jim smashes the egg and everybody wakes up and are back in where they left off in the second season mm-hmm. I think that was in I think the, the entire first episode everybody had their alter, alternative lives if I remember mm-hmm. right yeah yeah so with that happen all that happened in their 
dreams are just thrown away and they are back under the dome again and everything is back to normal. Uh, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Except some new characters. The dog you mentioned. Some dog is stalking Big Jim. And we have a girl that Barbie was involved with in dream life uh, and had been for a year and they were just about to have a baby, I think. Or if they just found out that she was pregnant, maybe. Mm-hmm. And we we have Marge, he- Marge Helgerberg. I pronounced that name right. Helgenberg. Yeah. Helgenberg. Uh, her character, which I have forgotten the name of as well, shows up as therapist in, yeah. in town. And those are from the dreams, but now they are in under the dome. And they are they are up to something because they want to get the hands their hands on the egg, but we don't know what or why they are up to. And that that's pretty much what's happened in the first three episodes, I think. Did I miss anything? Oh, uh, when I <laughs> when I listen to you tell it back, it sounds so much better than what it actually <laughs> how it actually played out, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> it was it was awful. Yeah, it was. It was like, well, let's start with the positives because that should be a fairly short list for me. But I have to say before I even get into the positives, this was the best unintentional two hour, like the first two episodes, that that was the best unintentional two hour comedy (laughs) shows that I've seen in a long, long time. Some of the dialogue was so on the nose and so ridiculous that it, it, it was just laughable. I mean, you're always hope. It's amazing. Like hope always burns in your heart that something's going to turn the corner. Uh, yeah. So even though our expectations were low going into this third season, you know, I still thought, well, you know what? Maybe they might actually pull something out of their hat and get put the show back on the track. But like within the first 30 seconds, when Barbie's standing in front of the the white light and and says to everybody, so we're heading to an alternate reality, I'm going like... <laughs> <laughs> How the heck does he know that? Like, like, yeah. are you just spelling it out for the audience? What's going to happen? Like, they have no, oh, it, there's no sense of uh, audience intelligence. Um, the show is just so ridiculously yeah. bad. Is <laughs> is the only way I can say it. Uh, yeah. It was like, in, so when that happened within the first 15 seconds, you can't believe in these characters. Like, Barbie's got these people to the thing, so they can all go into that light, but he should go back and get Julia or try to, re- yeah. or, you know, try to rescue her. But no, then he comes up with some, I, I promised her I would lead you out of here. And I go, well, you, <laughs> you've basically done that. So go back and get Julia now and, and bring her along with you. Right. But no. Yeah. yeah. So things, and it just got worse. Like oh, when um, big Jim's, <laughs> you know, watching TV, drinking the bottle. <laughs> and then he shoots the TV. He says nothing ever good on TV, anyhow. And I thought, geez, are you talking about this show by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> and and you have you have to wonder why they did that. I mean, are they looking for lo- laughs? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. You you would think it's... that's kind of like a a wink at the audience or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But so dumb. Yeah, <laughs> like it's. It's it's bad enough for a good show to make that kind of a comment, but when you're not a good show and you make that kind of a comment, your people are laughing at you and not with you. Like that yeah. that's the difference, right? So it's just making the show seem even sillier than it is. And then yeah. you had that one guy that Barbie's dad was talking to. He was some head of some of some corporation or whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. And he's got the egg. How he got it doesn't really make any sense, but no. Because this part of the show was actually happening in the real world. Yes, because yeah, I think that, so, that, yeah. that part was real. So yeah. Barbie's dad is dead. Zero reaction yeah. from Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> he, he buried him. Yeah. But, kind, uh, yeah. And then, <laughs> you know, but getting back to, I believe the actor's name is Eric LaSalle. And I think he was like on one of those doctor shows for a long time. I think it was ER yeah, the, or something ER, like that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And it. <laughs> He's, you know, the, the the father's pleading for the egg, and the Eric LaSalle's character says, "I don't give a care about anybody in that damn town, anybody." <laughs> 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 Again, you don't know if they're being serious or they're winking at the audience. But it was, I was just laughing out loud at some of these lines. It was just so ridiculous. Um, yeah, yeah. But I think uh, they they might try to get cancel themselves out. Yeah, but. And I'm sorry, I was going to say some of the positive things, but you must be happy with with the explanations as to what the dome is about, at least. At least it's not a government thing. No, it's not a government thing. But it doesn't I don't seem know. to be. 
No, but I don't know. What is it about? Is it the... I, I can't really... Is, is she alien or... Well, I think she was regenerated by an alien force, but... Um, yeah. And it looks like the butterflies were basically the souls of these people that yeah. had been put into the cocoons, right? So yeah. this episode, it was kind of matrixy and an invasion of the body snatchers. But yeah. after that first line from Barbies that uh, we're headed to an alternate reality, it's just like they're, you guys are just pulling stuff out of the air now. So yeah. it, it, it's it's all kind of laughable. And at the same time, it's sad because if if the show had a sense a strong sense of what it was about they could have used this episode to explain away some of the things that we saw thought were silly in the previous seasons yeah. but because it it's not good it basically now the show has killed all the tension because everything that happened in the previous seasons that you thought might be explained away by what's happened in this episode never really they never really took advantage of that. So the fact in these first two hours, everything that happened never really happened. It really carries over into the rest of the series now. So yeah. they can pull stuff out of their hat now, uh, and it's not a surprise anymore. I mean, it was already for me, it was already at that point last season. But this just really put a star on the fact that there's there's no tension in the show because one week somebody's going to be the best friend of somebody, and the next week they're going to be like their worst enemy, and they, they people will just flip on a dime. So yeah, it's, this is supposed to to take place in a very short time span as well. well I think. Now we're up to week three. Yeah, so to I the mean, intro. So each yeah. season represents a week, yeah. which I think is, how, this is the first time they've ever said it out loud. Though I think we've yeah. heard this said, but it's never been established in the show until now, I believe. No. And I think they are very. When you hear them say that, you you can relate to it. But I mean, so much happens, and and people are, as you say, they are flipping between friends and enemies and uh, betrayal and everything. Yep. And I mean, you can't do it that fast. No. I mean, you you don't flip for over a day to go from being worst enemy to friends with someone just like that. So it's so unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it's just <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so crazy that you just don't know where. I don't I don't know where to begin. Like the, I can't. No. This 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 show is beyond trying to make any sort of critical sense of it's just a train wreck and now you just kind of watch it to see how far away they can get off the track and uh, yeah. the first two episodes the third episode was a, a bit better because they got away from this whole alternate life timeline stuff but man yeah, that, those first two, yeah those first two episodes were just unbelievably bad <laughs> yeah and i got i got some of the vibes i did get from tommy knocker movies where, where they are all in the spaceship and when they were down there with the cocoons and, and so I don't really know why but I, I got the same bad feeling that I had when I saw that movie. Yeah, and yeah. oh man, the, now they've set up these f faux drama arcs. I, they've set up like a couple of triangles now. They've got Barbie, Julia, and this new girl, yeah. uh, Eva, I think is her name. Yeah. And then now you've got you've got Joe and Nori. And the new guy with the glasses, I can't yeah. remember his Hunt, name. Hunter, I think. Hunter? Hunter, okay, Hunter. Yeah. So now you've got like two two love triangles going on. And like Big Jim, <laughs> Big Jim wants everybody out of the town. <laughs> he doesn't even want the dog with him. Uh, uh -oh. but, then, but he takes the dog eventually. And it, it, it's just so hilarious. Like he shoots Junior in the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> says, now we're even. And then the next, the next, like three scenes later, he's he's trying to connect with him again. And it's like, he, yeah. there's just no <laughs> consistency in... Like you know, one one and up scene, people are at their throats, and the next they're like best friends. It's just you yeah. know so plot driven. Can't trust any of the actions of any of the characters. There's nothing anybody can do in this series that will surprise me because there's no consistency with these characters. It's it's no, it's, un very, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's very uh, illogical. Yeah, and this Eva girl, if she thinks she's pregnant, yeah, she wouldn't go out looking for her, her camera. She would go back to the hospital, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> reconfirm whether or not she is. And yeah, I'm sure yeah. that this is going to be played out as a plot element that she is actually pregnant. And they're going to say, yeah. "Oh, well, how's that possible? Because everything that I thought everything that we just went through was just in our heads, you know, yeah. like so." But all these <laughs> cocoons are probably interconnected, right, with all that purple vine stuff that was on the walls. So they were probably exchanging yeah. fluids or who knows what. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that playing out. And then people, it, it's just so so crazy. And then 
Junior, who got shot in, oh, he got shot in the real world, didn't he? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But then he, when he gets, he still had the hole in his t-shirt when he came back. But see, it's it's so confusing <laughs> that I was I couldn't remember that. They didn't find another shirt for him. Yeah. And now we've got these two new mysterious people, Mar- who Mark Helgenberger is Christine yeah. Price, and the other lady, Ky- Kylie Bunbury, who's Eva Sinclair. They've, they've managed to pull in two more new people. And, yeah, you just you just wonder where things are going to go now. But it, it looks like they've committed themselves to the fact that the dome is of alien origin, and it needs to... It seems it's like a body snatchers sort of storyline. They it needs to take these people in and reprogram them to become like a stable society, which allows these aliens to survive on or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I, I I remember when they started, they said that they wouldn't do the same ending as the book had. And, right. Uh, to beginning with, I was happy with that because I'm not that fond of the ending of the book, but. Uh, as it's starting to grow now, I I forgive the book and I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so much better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, one other thing that I'm very disappointed in is actually the actor Eddie Ka- Cahill. Eddie Cahill. Uh, Cahill, yeah, because I I uh, watched CSI New York. Right. Where he, where he played a detective, and I thought he was a great actor, and he probably still is. Just a role that isn't. But in in this. He's terrible, mm. I think. Yeah. And I, I don't mean that he is terrible as an actor, but his character is totally uninterested and totally nothing, really. Mm-hmm. So that that is one big disappointment for me. Yeah, and his, his whole very thing about... For that. Yeah, his whole thing about getting closure on the fact that he killed the, Joe's sister, that's just so ridiculous. Like, you can going to forgive me? <laughs> yeah, and and when he, when he was shot and he was sitting there... Stretching out his hand and oh, yeah. it was like a daytime soap opera yeah. or something like that. It was yeah, all those all badly those cuts, done and yeah, all those cuts between the various scenes was that was yeah. just yeah, it yeah. was all yeah. Those... I just I just cannot <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't wrap and my head around it. So one thing I was thinking about also was that when Big Jim was going in the boat with a where he brought the dog, right? Where was he going to sail? He know that the dome is covering everything i mean yeah was he gonna i, I do think it? he was going back to that house on the island yeah remember, okay yeah remember that and then on the way back yeah. he let that lady drown yeah that might be i i, I was uh, seeing uh, in front of me how he did uh, like in the truman show oh yeah where he steers the boat all the way to the end and then just open the door <laughs> walks <laughs> out oh <laughs> uh, that would be nice yeah yep <laughs> yeah well um so this was actually worse than we were hoping for. Or yes, it was. It to be. But it was at least it was funny. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, Unintentional was. or not, it was. I I didn't. I haven't laughed so much in a long time. It was just so so poorly written and so oh, so far for show. And and you know that some of these actors are probably a lot of these people in different properties would be really good actors. Like we know Dean yeah. Norris from Breaking Bad is yeah. a fantastic actor. We know Mark Helgenberger is is a good actor, solid actor. Yeah. Yeah. Though some of her scenes, every time she was with some, like that first scene when she was in Joe's bedroom, I thought, are they having an affair or something like that? Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> he seemed really touchy-feely to the point of almost like creepy. Did, yeah. did you get that vibe yeah. too, or is that just me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so too. I yeah. thought at one second he was going to lean in and kiss her or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, this is kind of, <laughs> this is uncomfortable. Yep. And boy, did the actor that plays Joe and the other the actor that plays uh, Nori, they grew a lot over the last between these two seasons, eh? Like yeah, Joe, I, Joe is taller than Barbie now. Yeah, they they grow in uh, in size, but not in in their act, acting skills. Uh, and, oh, and Nori's even taller than <laughs> Joe, so it's like wow, yeah. they they both shot up like a foot over the la- between seasons. So yeah, that will happen in the week under the dome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I this is a an ongoing train wreck that I just yeah. cannot fathom where they're gonna take this. Yeah, and I must say that I'm 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 actually surprised because we haven't liked this series from almost from the beginning. So my hopes for this third season was probably the lowest I have had for any TV show ever, and still they 
managed to disappoint me. So I think that that in itself is a is achievement. Mm. Well, they did disappoint me. They they stayed to true to their problems that they've had over the previous seasons, but they surprised me with how much they made me laugh with this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't stress that enough. I just thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, Maybe it'll turn into a comedy. Well, it, uh, to me, it already has. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what else can we say? I don't these know. New triangles. I don't know what kind of crazy things are going to come up. The only interesting thing I hope is, uh, I, and I don't know if he's going to be a returning character, but Eric LaSalle's character, yeah. I'm hoping that there will be more outside interaction because that seems to be like the only area that where the show has any chance of having some interesting things happening because i don't want to see any more problems about water or food or no, blocking no. the sunlight or no. stuff yeah, like and that I, I think one of the the most critical thing that they are missing out on now or at least in these three first episodes is that we no longer see how tough it is to be under the dome how the food is running out water and anything yeah. it's like they are they are living their lives and and they are living them pretty satisfied they have food and everything they have electricity. We, we don't see that yeah we don't see that no. they are suffering okay no. they are suffering because they are trapped but not that they are uh, lacking of of important stuff anymore and i think that is something that they need to bring out more to get interesting otherwise they're just forced to be in the same place but they are not suffering enough well as long as you got nori Shooting arrows into poor little animals. I mean, food yeah. is not going to be a problem, right? That was kind of that was kind of cutthroat too, right? And right in yeah, front, of, but... right in front of Joe. What if she missed a little bit? She could have hit him instead. But uh, yeah, that yeah. that would be fun. <laughs> and then they they could have brought him back and said, "Now we have food." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have made it more interesting. And poor Ben, poor Ben. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Well, he didn't he didn't have to be there. Uh, that long so that's yeah that's good news for him he's out of it yeah out and of that it. whole sequence with barbie supposedly like up with this on that mission with the with the yeah. mercenaries that did not look like a foreign country that that looked like maine <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that i was know really, you can only really do so sad. much with, yeah you can do with a show budget but my goodness that yeah. that was so north carolina looking like i was laughing again i was laughing at it yeah and i and i, I must say i haven't been at any such a mission that they were on but I doubt very much that they have uh, that queen-sized bed and uh, <laughs> everything but, <laughs> that they had to sleep in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that didn't really sound authentic either, either to me. No. So uh, where where do you think the show is going to go from here? Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's impossible to tell because they seem to... I, I don't think they have decided. Or when they filmed this episode, it, it seems that they haven't decided. They are just... Uh, sitting in a in a room and drinking tequila, and as as they get more drunk, they write the next next episode, and what happens happens. No, I don't think they do that, but it it doesn't seem like they have a plan. They do whatever comes to them in in the spare of the moment. I don't know. Maybe they have some grand plan, and I hope they have, and I hope they execute it this season, give this give the show an ending, and go on to new adventures. I can't see how this uh, series will survive into the fourth season. No, it, it's it's hard to believe. And I, I think like the viewership for the first couple episodes was down significantly. Yeah. So, But they always say that you learn the most from what, and whatever you're trying to learn a, a new thing is to look at something that's done poorly instead of something yeah. that's done well. Because then you can see the mistakes. So like if for all the controversy that Lost had with its last season or so, generally the quality of that show, I think, most people will agree was was higher than this show yeah. by margin. Yeah. So even though their last season played out like a whole alternate timeline for the, the majority of that last season, in that show, and even the time travel stuff, in that show, it worked because you were invested in the characters and yeah. there was a clear sense of the characters were staying true to themselves for the most part. There might have been the occasional lapse. But here you can see that even like just in these two episodes with this all this alternate timeline stuff, you didn't buy any of it because nothing that's gone on before has established the consistency of these characters and you you're not you're not invested emotionally in what's happening to them. So you're you're just kinda of laughing at 
the ridiculousness of what they're going through. And that's yeah. that. That's what King King talks about when he one of his favorite things when he's writing is he likes the to make the seams between what's possible and what's not possible as transparent as possible, so that when the reader crosses over. They can never exactly pinpoint that line or moment in the book where the story's gone from the real to the fantastical. Yeah. And oh man, Under the Dome is rarely, rarely in the in the realm of anything realistic. <laughs> so, <laughs> so oh. you just don't. Everything is just like wow. Yeah. And here in Sweden, it's it's actually airing about a week after oh, the okay. U.S. And that's that in in itself is pretty uncommon here. Oh. Uh, we are usually more after when things air in the U.S. But it was interesting. I actually read a review of the first episode in a, in one of the bigger Swedish newspapers, and the woman who wrote, wrote it had approximately the same uh, thoughts about it that we do. And she also mentioned that you did when Big Jim shoots the TV and says nothing good anyway. That it was a refer- reference to the show. So she didn't like it either. And and for the about the same reasons as we have given, so that that was interesting to see that others think uh, the same. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, there's just like after Junior gets shot and it, it she acts hurt for a minute, but then he's climbing down ladders and like yeah. he's getting hurt worse by a butterfly. And that whole sequence with Julie on the ladder with the butterflies, like what what yeah, was that all that, about? Like, it was just yeah. Fake drama, you know. Yeah. Compare like they they had an episode on Fringe about the butterflies, kind of like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to judge anything on this show. So. Yeah. There's no sense of consistency. No. And well, we are going to watch the show. I'm forcing Lou to watch it so we can mm. talk about it. But I don't know if is, is it ten episodes. Thirteen. How many? 13, okay, so we have 10 left uh, before it's over, and hopefully it will be over with this season. Yeah. But it would be interesting to hear from, from our listeners, because when I post on Facebook about stuff about Under the Dome, a lot of people seems to like it, and hmm. uh, we're not saying that you are wrong. You, no, everybody has not. their opinions, but it would be interesting to see or hear from you what it is you like about it, and what it is that we have missed, or, <laughs> or thinking differently about yeah, that would be very interesting to hear. Yeah, and and if anybody can convince us that we think this actually is a good good show, I promise you, I will have a grand prize for you. <laughs> <laughs> a complete. So that's series, a challenge. A complete series of uh, Under the Dome on <laughs> Blu-ray <laughs> or something. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, that's all my thoughts. I I will close with one more positive thing, and I think it w- it was an intentional funny line, but I laughed when Big Jim called Julia a bag of hair. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a great line. <laughs> yeah. Yep. One of the few. One of the few in the whole first three episodes. Yeah, I think I think actually there were quite quite a lot of good lines, but uh, not in the way they were intention intended to be good. No. Nope. More more that we thought they were funny. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that uh, is ending our thoughts of the Under the Dome first three episodes. Please comment on it and send in what you thought about it. And we will come back to the upcoming episodes as they air. It's just a jump to the left. Moving on, we're going to be revisiting the Cemetery Dance Stephen King Revisited site. And this time we're talking about Rage, a yes. one, of the, one of the Backman books. And we have... The Historical Perspective article by Bev Vincent, and there's some interesting stuff in this one, I thought. Didn't you think so, Hans? Yes, it was. It's always interesting to hear how a book was written and why, and I found it very interesting. I I didn't know that if things had gone a little bit different, this could have been King's first book. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, actually. I think that might have changed a bit. Probably he would have been who he is anyway but i think it could maybe have taken a little more longer since this book might not have been liked by everybody because of its theme yeah the historical context is interesting but in this particular case it's actually what's gone on in the real world after this book was released that's raised a lot of the more interesting points for me because this, as to yeah. the story itself it's not one of my favorites is it what what do you think of it no it is it isn't i hadn't read it for quite some time before i read it for this podcast 
I think it's it's a rather slow story, and I think I was surprised that it took place so little in in the classroom. Uh, a lot of it has to do with they are talking about previous experience and things like that. I, I in my mind, I thought it would take more place in the classroom and what happened there. So I was a mm-hmm. bit surprised by that. Yeah. And I think you can you can feel that it's a pretty old story as well. Yeah, I think King, it really shows one of the few times where King is really showing off his writer skills in that, like using extended or really pushing like comparisons and metaphors and things of that nature. So it has that really feel of a writer trying to show off as well. And for that for that reason, that it doesn't really work for me as well as those other stories. Though I do have to say, if you look at the original cover for it, I think that's a pr- it's a pretty cool cover. <laughs> yeah, it's something that would uh, fit right on a hard case crimes line of books. Are, are you are you familiar with the cover that I'm talking about, Hans? It's yes, with a yes. student um, sitting the on the teacher's desk, desk with the teacher's yeah. legs sticking out. Yeah. Yes. That is, as you say, it's a, it's a it's a very good cover, but it's it's also a very creepy cover. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. So that it captures the essence of the book well. But yeah. this has just turned into one of those things where, because of what's happened in the real world, especially the states with school shootings and things of that nature, I, I've seen a lot of interesting reactions from people about King's decision whether or not he should have pulled the book from circ- the story from circulation. Mm. My my position on that is that it's all, always the creator's choice whether or not he wants what he wants to do with his work. It, but once once it's out there, there's always the argument that it's it's part of the public domain and sort of a, a becomes like a shared property. But uh, you know, I I just feel that in the climate when King pulled the book, I think he made the right decision. I always like his comparison to the book, uh, calling it an accelerant. I I agree with him that I don't think any one individual piece of fiction or a movie or a song or a video game causes a person to flip their switch and go crazy. But I, I think the cum- accumulation of all those kind of things together can cause people to, to lose it. Mm. I don't know how. what's your thoughts on that, uh, Hans? Well, I, I agree with you that it, it's definitely King's decision and you have to respect his, uh, his decision. But I think that, as you say, I don't think a book or a movie or a song is is responsible for someone doing, for instance, a school shooting. I think that person would have done it, even if, if that person would say, oh, I did it because I read, read Rage. Uh, yeah. If that person hadn't found Rage, he or she would have read something else or listened to something else yeah. that would have gotten the person to do the same thing. So I don't think you can say that it's the book or the movie's fault. Mm-hmm. But I can definitely respect King's decision and I think I might would have done the same as well because you don't want to feel that you something you did is causing someone to kill a lot of people even if if it's unfair and it probably would have happened anyway I wouldn't want to have that on my conscience anyway but I think and he pulled it quite a, a lot of years ago but I think that maybe maybe he should reconsider it because I think today you have so much that is worse. I mean, you have video games, you have uh, other stuff like that that are very realistic and where where the purpose is to shoot people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that is more harmful than the, this book because I mean, it's it's a cr- it isn't very graphical the book in itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was a little of what I meant when I was surprised that it so little of it took place in the classroom. I mean, he kills obviously a couple of people. But the other one is more psychological, and he get people to talk about their childhood and stuff like that. So, if you compare it to a lot of other other things, it isn't that violent. Mm-hmm. I think that just because it's in a school and the school shouting, if sh- shooting, if it would have been bank robbery or something else, I don't think it would have gotten the same reaction. Right. So yeah. I think. If if you would do a reconsider, maybe it could be published again. 
Uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying, because uh, I know like there's a, a new uh, or a recent uh, computer game out uh, called Hatred, which and the the whole um, object of that game is to go around killing innocent people. Yeah. So that's kind of, that is a progression of something that falls along the same line of what King captured with his book. But I, I think in, in this kind of a situation, it it's... It really is the author's decision, and I know yeah. for myself, if I had read a wrote a book and something like that, this, and then later on in the news I saw that something you know something terrible had happened, and my book was in his locker and cited as one of the sources, I yeah. would I would think hard about that, and I think that's what what King went through. Like, and in his position, uh, even then he was he was making enough money from his other books. It wasn't like this pulling this book was going to make or break him and any any no. thing. No. So why why add to the fire? Yeah, and I, I I think he made the right decision. Uh, I know if there's people out there that say if I would want to defend freedom and speech of that, and this this kind of comes under the whole thing about. Uh, King's position on gun control as well, I think. Um, yeah. Because yeah. in his books, there are guns, but they're never glorified. And yes, they're used sometimes for, to do terrible things, but he doesn't dwell on that. He, like, he doesn't describe the guns in any loving, erotic ways or anything like that. They're just a no. tool that the characters use. And surprisingly, there's not a lot of guns in King's books. His, his, no. his horror is usually much more hand to hand kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. With non-gun type of weapons, so uh, it, it's it's a touchy thing, and I think you have to leave it in the hands of the author. Uh, if if you've created something that you're not comfortable with, it's it has to be your decision whether or not it's out there or not. I, I know there's arguments that once something's out in, in the public, that it sort of becomes a shared thing for everyone. But this is this is tough because it's a it's like a moral question that yeah. each of us has to look at ourselves, and if it if his pulling the book um, saved one life or, or kept one person from, you know, doing it, I mean, there's no way to know that. Uh, but uh, you you have to look at that as a as if that's a possibility. And then I think then I think it's worth pulling the book. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I agree, and I think even though I think it's unfair that, yes. that it is pulled because it's it's uh, worth reading and. Probably, if if someone wanted to get their hands on it today, they could, uh, without too much trouble, really, uh, mm -hmm. in in some form. So it it's unfair for those of us who want to read it because it's one of King's early books. But as you say, I agree with you, and I would probably do the same myself if I were written it, mm -hmm. uh, just to be on the safe side. So I I can totally understand that. But one thing that's really sad is that this is a rare book. It, this isn't found very often, mm. and for for that one to end up in in a, that kind of person's hand, it's a really waste of a, of a good, rare book mm. <laughs> that could have been put to use better. In, in are, are you talking way. about the the single novel itself or, yeah. or the collection? Yeah, because I, because I think that was what they found in the locker for in one of the shootings. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's, I've I've never seen. Like I've seen this book cover before, but I've never seen Rage as a single release book on its own. I've I've only seen it through the Bachman book collection. Yeah, I I actually have this this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's nice, little paperback. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. So this should prompt some interesting user reaction as well, and I hope we get some feedback on it. You can also read uh, Norman Prentice, who is a teacher. His thoughts on the book, which were quite interesting, and is for him, it's not really the shooting part that disturbs him, but it's a sequence where he's the anger that we always seem to carry at that age uh, when you're turning to into a teenager, becoming a teenager, whether it's just the hormones or whatever. But I think if anybody looks back on their life and 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 thinks about when are you the most angry? It is during your teenage years. So yeah. it, that's interesting. Like he, he says the angers that he sees in ki kids. And I'm sure it's even worse today because the, the hardest thing to get um, a teenager to do is ta uh, is to explain why they're angry. Like they just always kind of give you that blank look, right? Um, <laughs> and yeah. that, and that's, that can, that's scary. Right? Yeah. If you, somebody can't tell you why they're angry, but they are angry. So that that's the aspect of the book that I enjoy the most too. Actually, is 
Yeah. It it would be interesting to see how this book was if it was well met now uh, when it's released because I think I think you feel that it's written long ago when you read it. Uh, mm. And it's not one of King's best books, I think. Uh, oh. It's it's a, it's a good book, but it's not one of his best, I think. Uh, I think that it, it it's it's a little bit hard to say this because it's a, such a horrible thing. But I think it should have focused more on what happened in the classroom, and not go so much into when they are telling their experience from when they're younger and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, but it's. Uh, it feels wrong to say that it should be more about uh, the, what happens in the classroom when it's about what it's about. So, but mm -hmm. if you take the book and and leave the real life out of the discussion for now, I think that that's the case. Especially of interest is, is reading uh, Richard Chismar's thoughts on Rage because he he started started reading it a little bit and then he stopped and he never got back to it until like uh, I believe until he started doing this revisitist thing, but. It's just the story that he says is too nasty. Yeah. Because yeah, I think... because he says like all the other stories, he he likes to believe in new Bigfoots and UFOs and magic and voodoo. But the problem with rage is it's and as we've seen, it's just too real. So yeah. they, those Charlie Deckers really do exist, which is which is really scary. Yeah, and I think I I don't I don't know if there had been any school shouting shooting when this book was released in the U.S. But I think you you look at this book and its contents in a different way now because yes what what's happening in real life and and that makes it so much horrible. But I don't think that when it when it was released first, I don't think that people because uh, I don't know it was released in seventy seven right yes. I don't think there had been any school shouting shootings by then, uh, mm -hmm. at least as far as I know. So that would have been like write, writing about terrorists uh, flying planes into uh, a high building before uh, that happened. No one thought it would happen. Like the running when man. It happened, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then it then it happens and yeah. and gets so much more uh, scary. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you could see this book as before and after it happened in real life. Yeah. Another th interesting thing I find ab about this book, and it's kind of like with Salem's Lot, is the original title, I think King was had a lot more base things on his mind because the original title for was Salem's Lot was uh, Second Coming. And yeah. for Rage, it was originally titled Getting It On. So yeah. <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I can understand that title because he refers to that a lot in the book that they are getting it on, and when they are yeah. starting to uh, reliving older experience, they are getting it on and and stuff. So I, I think that would have been a good title. And uh, yeah. as far as I know, it was only changed because when it was when it was going to be released as a Bachman book, the first time King sent it in, everybody knew that he had tried to get it published before. So. They know getting it on is an old Stephen King book, so I I think it was Bev who wrote about this that the second time he sent it in as a Bachman book, he had changed the title so people wouldn't recognize it. Right. So I think that that's the reason, only reason why he changed the title. I think it would have worked with getting it on as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a tough call, you know, because on the other to argue for. This book being read is, goes uh, into what Richard talks about is what if these Charlie Deckers are now grown up? The, the, that's the scary thing about this book is Charlie Deckers are out there in the world right now. Yeah. Just waiting for a fuse to be lit. Uh, and maybe they'll stay dormant and never, and never lose it. But occasionally one of them will have their circuit breakers fried and they will lose it. Yeah. So th this this is a book that I think I would not ever recommend a teenager read, <laughs> but I think when you're a bit older, I, I do think it is a good book, good story to read because um, yeah. it's a tough beast. And if you haven't read it, but you really want to do read it, you you should be able to find a copy, but still somewhere out there. I was yeah. able to get it through the Bachman book collection, which also has The Long Walk, Road Work, and The Running Man. So a very interesting yeah. collection. Yeah, and I think I think that if let's say that King re reevaluated this and said, okay, I think it's safe to publish Rage now, it would be a lot of writings about it that, and he would probably be 
get massive critiques for it. Oh, for uh, sure. But I think that when when the book was actually released, I think that a lot of people would be disappointed in it because it's it's not as gruesome as you might think if you are saying that Stephen King is writing a book about school shootings. So I I think it's it it might not be as cruel as people think it would be who hasn't read it. Yeah, that happens with everything. But things that you thought were scary as a kid yeah. look tame. I mean, the original King Kong, people were screaming and fainting in the theaters. Now yeah. I, I show my son the thing and he laughs at the special effects because it's not CGI, right? No, no, I agree. Another interesting thing that was mentioned in, I think also it was Bevo mentioned it, was that one of the reasons that they published this as a Bachman book was that the publisher believed that you couldn't release more than one book a year by an author because it would be cannibalizing on itself that the first book you released and then the second would steal sales from the first book mm-hmm. uh, and I, I don't know how, how the book climate was back in uh, 1977 but we, can, we have already established that that isn't the case today or the previous years, since King has published at least two books a year for a lot of years, the last ten years. So, yeah. But maybe the market was different back then. But it, it's interesting to see how the philosophy of book publishing has changed. Yeah, yeah. It's well, like like with everything, it's become much more complicated. <laughs> yeah. And much yeah. more focused, uh, trying to yeah. maximize profits. It, it is interesting. I'm I'm looking at the on Goodreads, which is a book reviewing site. Uh, Rage is. Out of five stars, it's sitting at 3.77. So mm, okay. there are a lot of people that do like it. Yeah, and I think, uh, it's, I don't know if it's fair to say this, but I think that when you grade books, I think that King books might grade ne- uh, grade an extra points for just being a Stephen King book. Probably, for uh, sure. Yeah, I don't know. It, I think it. a lot of people say, oh, it's good because it's Stephen King. Mm-hmm. And often it is, and mostly it is good. But I yeah. mean, it, all book might not be as good as if, if it were written by someone else. Yeah. Um, I, sure. I remember. I remember this. This really hasn't to do with rage, but it it, it has with Richard Bachman to do at least. That when Thinner was released, mm-hmm. one of the reviewers said that this is how Stephen King would write if he could write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> Without knowing that it was King who would yeah. have written. So that's. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that. Thinner as a Bachman book sold like I think twenty eight thousand copies, and then when it was yeah. revealed who who it was, then the book went on to sell like ten times the amount. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. your your point about getting an extra star in a review site because it's a Stephen King book is is well founded. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so that is our episode for. This time, uh, episode yes. 47, and there'll be a bit of a break here as uh, summer months are upon us. Hans and I will be probably not getting together until August, so hopefully yep. everyone out there is having good times as well. And do you have anything else you want to add, Hans? No, it will be a summer, uh, hope, hopefully a hot one, and hopefully reading a lot of books. Mm-hmm. And hopefully you who listen will do the same. A lot of Stephen King books, maybe, and let us know what you think about them. Yep. And yeah. hopefully most of you are starting to finish your reading your copies of Finders Keepers by now and hope to get some more feedback from our previous podcast. Yeah, uh, enjoy your summer. And yeah. we still have bizarre bad dreams to look forward to later this year. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And speaking of collections, in the next podcast, we are going to look at Night Shift Collection, mm-hmm. with which we are going to do a revisited on. Yeah. And we are also going to talk about I think we said three about the, three of the stories. We haven't decided yet. We're going to yeah. Uh, well, we'll each compare. pick our we'll pick our fa- three favorite and yeah. see if they line up. And this is your chance to see what tell us what your three favorite are as well. Exactly. And so we are going to look at your comments, and Lou and I are going to talk about which we like most, and we will talk about three or four stories a little bit extra in the next podcast. So. Pick up your night shift collection and let us know which stories you would like us to talk about. Here, here. So, yep. have a great summer. But as always, stay safe, but stay scared. Bye bye. Bye.